All right. Um, today I want to walk you through uh, kind of the stage one um, J series swap harness. This one is actually for an EG Civic. So uh, just uh, bear with me while we try to get through it. Um, this is the part that will go into your firewall. This grommet can actually slide back and forth on here so that you can get this length, you know, to where it'll lay right up in there exactly like you would like for it to. Um, all of the splices in this harness are right in here. So if there's anything, if it ever needs any type of attention for whatever reason, um, if one of them were to, uh, for whatever reason, fail, you know, they're accessible here to splice. Um, this is your, what we would call, or what's often referred to as like the C101 connector. And it attaches to the interior harness here. And then that runs up under your dash on your Civic and goes to the C101 connector up under the, uh, like underneath the steering wheel area under the instrument cluster um, by the, you know, up, up above the kick panel up in there. This connects directly to your ECU connectors and it has a connector here that attaches to the rest of the harness. The reason why I put it on a sub harness like this is in case you know you break one of these little terminals off and you're like oh no what am I going to do then what you'll be able to do is just simply unplug this and you know send it back to me for repair or replacement um, or so, so that you can order replacement or whatever so that's uh, uh, how the interior part of that works it's not very complicated at all and remember these are set up this is the setup for an AEM uh, EMS2 306051. Um, so the setup for an OEM, um, running an OEM ECU is different. Uh, there's a you know a couple of things different. Like you'll have an OBD2 uh, port and um, just little stuff like that. And uh, you'll have a you know I'll, I, usually on those I will leave a couple of wires hanging out so that customers can hook up like a Dakota Digital. Uh, tack and speedometer converter uh, on those on those um, now so this will go through the firewall and then of course you'll have to remove the battery and the battery tray to where you can you know drill your hole in the firewall for that that takes about a two and a quarter inch hole um, there's I think this is really somewhere between um, two and three sixteenths and two and a quarter uh, but that's what it's gonna take is a two and a quarter inch hole there and the grommet it's it's thick it's pretty meaty but you can flex it and put it up in there after you drill your hole one of the things that you'll want to make sure that you do is deburr the edges of the hole so that you know you don't tear into your sheathing of the of the harness or get any of the the wires snagged on it or anything like that these are aircraft grade wires but uh, they can only take so much abuse you know um, just like anything. Um, now, like I say, this is a stage one harness. The difference between a stage one and a stage two harness is the type of sleeving that's on it. This just has regular, uh, what is known as PET braided sleeving. Um, it looks nice whenever you're done, but it doesn't exactly have a uh, hold up to the same temperatures that the, um, that the fiberglass braided wrap on the stage two harnesses does. You can also get a label kit for these, which you can see some of the pictures of that on my Instagram, um, uh, Facebook page, and um, uh, on my website, um, just to kind of give you an idea of what that looks like, and probably some of you probably have. Now, this will come under, like I say, it'll come under the uh, battery is where it will ultimately lay once you put the tray back in place. And this will feed up and over to the valve cover. Now there is a bolt hole on the valve cover that this will line up, you know, just right with up above the timing cover. And what you'll, what the best thing is, what my recommendation is, is to get some of those rubber insulated clamps and use that to secure the harness to that location. Um, and then we have two branches immediately that come off of the harness here. We've got this first branch that goes, it'll go down through the valley and it'll cut, it'll connect to your 
knock sensor, your cam sensor, and your alternator. It'll go down that away. And then you have another little branch that comes off and it will actually U back around and go down to your um, crank sensor, VTEC solenoid, um, oil pressure switch, and VTEC oil pressure switch. Uh, the, the little wire right there, that single wire, is for like your low oil pressure warning light on your dash. Then these come around and will, all uh, three of these are for your coils on your bank one, that's the rear, you know, the one towards the firewall. They will come around and connect to your ignition coils, and these will connect to your fuel injectors. Um, they are color coded, uh, like say on this one, it's brown for injector one, red for injector two, blue for injector three. And it's the same way on the coils. You'll notice um, there's a brown wire, a red wire, and a blue wire on this particular harness. And then, Routing along that bank one valve cover, the harness will wrap around the engine. This will kind of go down into the valley. You'll have a ground wire that comes off of that that will attach to the bank one cylinder head. That is the ground wire for the bank one cylinder coils. Um, you have here your uh, main engine ground wire. You have your wire to hook up for your temperature sending unit, you have the wire for your engine coolant temperature uh, sensor, and you have the wire for your fan switch that would be on the thermostat housing. The wire for the temperature sending unit, um, you either have to drill and tap a hole into your coolant distribution passage, or you have to get um, one of the, I think Mishimoto and Hasport, I think they both make them. Um, well, I know that they both make them, but I think that each of those make the uh, inline coolant temperature sender adapters. Notice that sender, not sensor. There's a difference between the two. Um, and I think Hasports actually has the fan switch port and the temperature sending unit port in it, but you can get one from Mishimoto also um, for the Civic temperature sending unit. And it just... You just cut your uh, radiator hose there and it installs in line and then you just screw your temperature sending unit into that. I think maybe you have to run a ground wire from it to your block or something like that too. But um, that's the crash course on that. This uh, single one right here, you notice it's kind of long. So it looks like it has the same plug on it as the uh, fan switch and engine coolant temperature sensor. But this is for the intake air temperature sensor. It's, you know, on the back of the intake there. Um, then you have another, if I can get them untangled, um, you have another branch that comes off of this thing as well. We'll address it now. This is for your, what we call the intake. We'll call it like the intake sensors or throttle body sensors rather. You've got the, this one actually has a flat map sensor um, on it, but there's the, map sensor, throttle position sensor, and idle air control valve connector. Those will obviously attach all to the throttle body. Um, the difference, I don't know if you can see it really well, I don't really have a way to zoom in right now, but um, this would, the same style connector on the throttle position sensor is often used on the map sensors on these. And you can see this is what the difference is between the flat map sensor and what would be on the round map sensor it would share the same same style connector as a throttle position sensor. So again, that's map sensor, idle air control valve, and um, throttle position sensor. Um, then we come around and we have the another branch that comes out of there, and this goes down to the transmission. This, the longest wire goes to your reverse lockout solenoid. It's the one where your upper mount would attach to the transmission. You'll notice a solenoid there. Um, and then this goes to the starter, of course, the single wire. And then this connector here, the gray connector, connects to your reverse light switch. And this connects to your, what, the, what is called the counter shaft speed sensor or output shaft speed sensor. This is the upper speed sensor on your transmission. 
on uh, some uh, on some other harnesses like for the uh, OEM drive by wire setups and for the O3 um, CL harnesses that are running an O3 CL ECU there will actually be two of these one for the upper and one for the lower but for the AEM we only use one and then we have another branch that comes out this is for the bank 2 ignition coils again they have their own ground wire you'll loop those or you'll route those down to the uh, to their respective cylinders and then this ground wire will attach to the cylinder head that's the ground wire for those and then you'll have I believe lastly I think I've covered all the branches there lastly you'll have your uh, fuel injector wires they'll just go right up and hook up to your uh, fuel injectors um, these these also are matched the colors match the uh, uh, ignition coil connectors like we've got white for injector six uh, injectors I mean uh, cylinder six we have uh, purple for um, cylinder five and then we've got yellow for cylinder number four so they all are color coded there they all color match so you can that's kind of a quick check to make sure that you know you have the right ones hooked to the right place because a couple of these like for cylinders four and five on the, especially on the ignition coils um i mean not four and five five and six they can reach um the uh the other ones so that's uh that's a pretty i think that's a a fair um rundown on the harness and uh on how to hook it up so um if you guys have any questions um let me know and i will you know contact me via uh, Facebook or Instagram or my email through my website and um, I'll see if I can help you with those oh don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button um, on, on this video don't forget to follow me on Instagram uh, at PJ's customs wiring and go and like and follow my Facebook page PJ's customs LLC